What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on chapter 4 in our series of the SSI Dry Suit Diver Program. As I've stated in other videos, please do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series for you to go out and dive a dry suit. Make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI Dry Suit Instructor and check out your local retail center to see what availabilities they have have as far as you choosing the proper dry suit. So to start out chapter four, we're going to be looking at several of the different accessories that you're going to be using with your new dry suit. Now, typically speaking, undergarments is one of the most important factors because obviously in a dry suit, you don't necessarily stay warm. You just simply stay dry. And our goal here is to prevent blood shunting. So to be able to do that and stay warm, we're going to need to choose the proper undergarment. Your local SSI dry suit instructor is going to help you choose the proper undergarment for uh, whatever thermal capacity you need, whether you're just diving warm water and you need it for protection or you're diving colder water and you need to stay warm throughout the dive. There's all different types of undergarments and they are specifically engineered by the same manufacturer that makes your dry suit. So I would encourage you to make sure your undergarments match the dry suit itself. Next up on the list, of course, is hoods. Now, there's two types of hoods that you're going to use in scuba. One is typically called a wetsuit hood. The other one is simply a dry suit hood. Now, against what most instructors will tell you, they are theoretically the same. They are both neoprene based hoods. They come in different thicknesses and the whole goal of the hood is to keep your head warm. However, with dry suit hoods, they come basically bibless. So in a wetsuit hood, you have a bib that folds down or goes down into the suit itself with a dry suit hood. They eliminate that bib because you don't want that bib getting in between the seal and your neck. And of course you can make a dry suit hood from say a standard wetsuit hood by simply just cutting off the bib. But you want to make sure that you get the proper fit and by doing so you can simply go by your local SSI training center and get properly fitted not only for your dry suit but also for your hood as well. Next up on the list, of course, is dry suit boots. Now, me personally, I like my boots pre-attached. I know there's a lot of divers out there that do not, but by getting a custom-made dry suit, you can really get the option of what you want. Do you want pre-attached boots? If you do, do you want the harder style dry boot or do you want a slim line boot? Or if you don't like your boots attached, do you want a latex sock, a fabric sock, or even just a neoprene sock? There's many different choices out there. Make sure you're checking with your local SSI retail training center and see what options they have. Whichever dry suit manufacturer you choose, they can make the suits to fit you properly and to suit your needs as a diver. Next up, of course, is gloves. And we talked about this in a previous chapter. There's really two different types of gloves that you can wear, whether it's a wetsuit glove or a dry suit glove. They both have their benefits. But typically, if you're going to be diving a dry suit, a lot of dry suit instructors will tell you, go ahead and go with the dry gloves. There's going to be several different benefits here. One, your hand never gets cold. Number two, it's going to be protected from the environment. So if you're like me and you have to wear a dry suit to actually protect you from, say, hazmatic environments, a lot of times I'll wear the dry suit gloves as well just to simply protect my hands as well. Well. Now, with dry gloves that comes in several different styles and designs, you need to check with your local retail center to see what designs come with the suit that you get and what type of ring system you need. Now, typically when you get dry gloves, you can also get removable seals for the suit as well, and that's what I would encourage you to do. This way, if you have a failure in the field, you can simply pull the seal out, put your new seal in it, put your glove back on, and right back to business you're going. Next up, of course, is a relief zipper. Now, unlike a wetsuit, we can't relieve ourselves within the suit unless, of course, we have some type of P-valve. But without a P-valve, you're going to need a relief zipper. Basically, what a relief, relief zipper is, it's a zipper in the crotch area that when you're on the surface, you can relieve yourself. Simply unzip, relieve yourself, and zip it back up. Now, we did an entire series on dry suit diving that's more in depth of this series. If you want to check it down below, one of those videos actually goes over how P-valves work and things like that that. So check out the series below in the little playlist that we linked for you and it'll give you a little bit more information of how that works and that's going to help you determine do you want a P-valve or an actual relief zipper. Now next up on the list we're going to talk about dry suit pockets. Most dry suits come with some type of leg pocket and even some dry suits will come with some type of arm pocket as well where you can store smaller accessories. Now me personally I like larger style pockets on my dry suit legs because it gives me more room to carry other accessories such as spare mask and things like that. Now one of the things that you might want to consider is whenever you choose a pocket for your dry suits you want to make sure that you can actually utilize that pocket while, while underwater. So my suggestion is is if you're trying on a dry suit make sure you put your gloves on and see if you got the dexterity to reach in your pocket to get out whatever accessory item you may need. 
Now let's talk about using your BCD with your dry suit. And a lot of people will tell you that you can only dive a dry suit while wearing a backplate wing. The reality is you can wear any type of BC system out there, whether it's a jacket style, a hybrid style, or even a modular system such as a backplate and wing. Me personally, I use all the above. I can dive it in singles, doubles, even side mount. Yes, I can even wear a dry suit while wearing my side mount harness. I would encourage you though to practice using the system that you're going to be using with your dry suit during your training. So make sure you check with your local SSI dry suit instructor to see which BC system is going to work best for your dry suit. And when you go to get size for a dry suit, take your BC with you and see how it operates. You may even need to upgrade the BC to be a little bit more comfortable. Now the next accessory that we're going to talk about is the neck ring and this is not something that you're going to use while diving. This is something that we use while using the dry suit at the surface. This is going to give you a little bit more breathability so that you're not sitting there with that super tight neck ring on and of course it's going to give you a little bit more comfort. You just need to make sure that you remove the neck ring prior to getting in through the water. Now the next accessory that we're going to talk about of course is your weighting system. Now typically speaking dry suits do take a little bit more extra weight simply because of the undergarments you choose to wear. Now with neoprene suits we typically wear more just because the neoprene is thicker. However your weight system of your BC should be able to adapt and hold the right amount of weight for you. If not then you may need to diversify that weight even onto a weight belt itself. So if you've not done a weight belt in a while you may want to switch over to one and start practicing with it. Now depending on what your weight ratio is you may be able to get by with lesser weight if you say switch over to a steel cylinder. Or in my case, diving doubles and side mount, of course I can get away with less weight simply because I have the extra weight of the cylinders as well. But your local SSI dry suit instructor is going to assist you in your weighting needs and that's going to be one of the first skills that he does for you is he's going to get you properly weighted in the confined water or pool sessions to make sure you're properly weighted to dive a dry suit. Now the next accessory we've actually already talked about in a previous video, that is your inflator hose. And there's many different lengths to inflator hose. I personally like custom length hoses simply because I don't run the risk of a lot of loops. However, also by getting a custom length hose, you can also direct that hose or route that hose any way that you want it. Since your inflator valve rotates, you can route the hose above your arm, below your arm, or you can route it from below or above. However works for you, your local SSI dry suit instructor is going to show you the best method method for you to prevent entanglements by having a bunch of long loopy hoses above you. Now the last thing that we're going to talk about in chapter 4 is of course your fins. And yes, unfortunately sometimes you are going to have to buy certain fins for certain dry suits. If you've got pre-attached boots like I do, a lot of times those pre-attached boots tend to be bigger than standard wetsuit boots and you may have to up a size of fins. Now this is not always the case. Me personally, I can wear the same fin for all my dry suits. However, a lot of people will choose to get a heavier set of fins to assist them so that their feet doesn't get too high in that dry suit. One of the worst things that can happen is a runaway inverted ascent. And by diving slightly heavier fins with a dry suit, you can actually help trim yourself out in the water while diving that dry suit. So guys, that's going to do it for chapter four in our series of the SSI dry suit diver program. Once again, please do not use this video as a way for you to go out and dive a dry suit. Make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI dry suit instructor. But stay tuned. We got three more videos in this series where we're going to hopefully help you pass your SSI dry suit final exam. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.